we are in the base of pit number one. It's the 16th of March. We've had a nice push back. Whoop. We've had a nice push back here and uh, nicely benched. And uh, this material is starting to come out now. We've given this vein the name of Kizzis Vein after one of the company directors, Joe Kizzis. So uh, let's hope we get some nice results from Joe from this and for the company from this vein. Hi, Old Gold here. Panning gold is one thing that I have never perfected. It is amazing just how many different styles of pans are used around the world. Here we see what is one of the smallest pans I have seen, being expertly used to pan out the last of a 10 kg sample, from Valterra's Livre Main to mine in Brazil. On Sunday, March 14th, Richard Crew videoed a small gold pour for us. The site was closed for the day due to the wet weather, and the pour was done outside, so there was enough light for the video. The pour was supervised by security personnel and was videoed by another member of the management team. This happens on a regular basis as it is a very accurate way of determining the gold content of each bulk sample going through the plant. Valtero Resources Livre Main to Gold Mine, is located in the central west region of Brazil, and is surrounded by other gold mines, some have been in operation for over 100 years. distance it's extremely close I've got four trucks running on this and here we are just tipping here it's that close it's no more than 150 meters Thursday, the 18th of uh, February on the second strip back as uh, in the announcement you can see we are absolutely motoring here. We are fighting against the elements at the moment. Uh, rain seems to be coming about uh, midday, one o'clock in the afternoon every day. So uh, it does seem to slow, slow things around. As you can see by this overlay, they have been moving a lot of dirt. The first slide is from February the 18th, and the second slide is from March the 6th. Although the photos are not taken from exactly the same position, you can still see how much progress has been made. We're on target one. Stripping is nearly completed. We're just about on the old thing, uh, another two and a half meters to go. So, uh, on Tuesday, we'll see if we take out the high grade old thing from here. Just behind the workshop, and close by to the ground. Sunday, 30th of March. Just give you a progress update here. The sump is now in, the water sump is now in. Thank God, because we've had a day full of rain. installed in a pump here now with the excavator so we can keep on top of the water we have exposed the vein as we were hoping to and it's exactly where we hoped it was just to give you an idea of the strip we've had and the pushback we've had here okay, we are in the 
base of pit number one. It's the 16th of March. We've had a nice push back. Oppa. We've had a nice push back here and uh, nicely benched. And uh, this material is starting to come out now. We've given this vein the name of Kizis Vein after one of the company directors, Joe Kizis. So uh, let's hope we get some nice results from Joe from this and for the company from this vein. good operator unfortunately he uh, supports a terrible football team Sao Paulo and uh, people here in Brazil are crazy for football so uh, Eddie Valdez now taking out the Kizis vein I was in Mali a few weeks ago, visiting Waraba Gold's folklore project. The day I arrived, the Mali police were on site evicting illegal miners from their lease. As you can see, there is a stark difference between how Richard Crew operates Volterra's Livramento mine in Brazil, and how the pirates operated in Mali before Waraba had them removed. Look at the difference between the pit walls, and how people are allowed to walk around operating equipment in Mali so very dangerous. This is exactly why mines need to be regulated, and why Richard puts so much time and effort into providing a safe workplace in Brazil.